Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. For New York... Bobby Richardson leading off, second base. Billy Gardner, third base. Roger Maris, right field. Mickey Mantle, center field. Yogi Berra, left field. Elston Howard, catching. Bill Scallon, first base. Pete Boyer, shortstop. Ralph Perry, pitching. Tony Kubek is still sidelined with a sore elbow, though he is available for pinch hitting duty. For the Cleveland Indians, Ken Aspromati, second base. Jimmy Pearsall batting second, center field. Tito Francona, left field. Willie Kirkland, right field. Bubba Phillips, third base. Johnny Romano, catching. Vic Power, first base. Woody Held, shortstop. And Jim Perry, doing the pitching. After some very fine weather for two days, there is a threat of rain hovering over Cleveland Stadium on the shore of Lake Erie. And a fairly strong wind going out toward right, from left to right. The temperature is about 66 degrees. With a forecast, just cloud in two with a high about 70. This marks the Yankees' final appearance of the season in Cleveland. Two games today. On the season... The Yankees against the Indians stand seven and six. The Yankees have won four. Now check that. They stand seven and four. The Yankees have won four at home and stand three and four here. The Yankees have won seven games and lost four against the Indians. They split two games here in this series. Jim Perry, who has won nine and lost ten on the season, is one and one against the Yankees this year, a major league life mark of 39 wins and 30 losses. He is 4-4 four and four on the uh, lifetime against New York. Ralph Terry, who has a record of 9-1, and one, is 2 nothing against the Indians this season. 41-47 is Major League Mark, 8-9 against Cleveland. He pitched a great game against the Indians. The last time the Yankees were here, he won 11 innings and defeated them and pitched perhaps one of the best games you've ever seen him work. But it was the day after a 91-degree day, and it had dropped to 53 degrees the next night, and out of it came a sore arm that has uh, sidelined him uh, frequently since. He pitched four good relief innings on the 16th against uh, the White Sox and got credit for the win. But since his 3-2 victory over Cleveland on June the 15th, that was his 13th appearance. This will be his 22nd. So in other words, since June the 15th, he has appeared only nine times. And three of those have been in relief. G. 
Jim Perry will be making his 27th appearance. He has won nine and lost ten. Jim Perry reminds you a great deal of Jim Coates in build. He's also very fast, but he has developed a good curveball. In his last start, he beat the Red Sox six to four. And prior to that, his last decision, he was defeated by Detroit two to one. The Yankees beat him 4-2 April 29th. And uh, 7-2, uh, he beat the Yankees on June the 13th. And beating Jim Coates, by the way. The umpires, back to plate, Sam Carrigan, Cal Drummond at first base, Joe Paparella at second, and Ed Rungi at third. Jimmy Dyke and Ralph House have uh, parted company now as the Indians take the field. Game time's 11 o'clock each night. Our air time five minutes earlier, 10.55, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night, just radio. Then the Yankees wing it back to Kansas City. Where we'll be on the air next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We will also do some televising from Kansas City, but we'll give you reports on that as we go along. Bobby Richardson leads off. Detroit won its game in the ninth inning, 3-2. to two. Yesterday, against the Red Sox, and so it's still three behind New York. Jim Perry ready to work. Bobby Richardson up. The right hand in with the wind-up. The first pitch of the game is a little outside, ball one. Richardson hitting 264. Phillips plays him short at third. The outfield about straight away. The right hander's next pitch is swung on, hit back through the middle out of the second in the center for a base hit. Bobby Richardson opens with a single to center. His 130th base hit. With such a nine behind Kubek. And one behind Mantle in total uh, hits on the team for team leadership. Billy Gardner batting 244. Occasionally hits and runs. Can go to the opposite field. Perry to the stretch. Pitch to Gardner. Swung on. Fouled off to the right of the plate. Out of play. Strike one. Nothing in one.
the windy day. Francona, Pearsall, and Kirkland in the outfield. Shades a little toward right. Jim Perry's delivery is low outside for a ball. Trying to keep it low, trying to get it on the ground. One ball, one strike. Power holding against Richardson. Jim Perry into the stretch. Now the delivery. Swung on, fouled off just a bubble. Strike two, one and two. One ball, two strikes. While the wind may be blowing out toward right, with these high stands, it swirls around and can kick back the other way down below. Right now, Perry sets, delivers, and Gardner takes it outside. Ball two, two, two. I can see, you know, old Glory blowing out toward right, but I can feel the wind hitting my face from the other side. So it's kicking back around. Two balls, two strikes. Jim Perry ready. Here's the pitch. Swung on to a high fly ball in the right center. And who's going to get it? Kirkland makes the catch. Pearsall and Kirkland suddenly both stopped and started looking at one another instead of the ball. So for a fraction there, it looks as if they're just going to stand and look. Here's Roger Maris. Maris hitting 280. One on, one out in the first inning. The Yankees have uh, found some exceedingly exceptional pitching in this series from Grant and Latman. Jim Perry to the stretch. And the pitch. It's low for a ball. I had occasion to uh, sit with Jimmy Dykes last night for a while. And he said, don't let anybody tell you that Grant wasn't great. And Latman was tremendous the next day. Here's the pitch. Swung on the roller. Hit foul to the right of the plate. One and one. Luke Apping, who was sitting with us, said, I'll tell you this, that Grant would have beaten anybody the other night. One ball, one strike. Bobby Richardson on first, one out first inning. Jim Perry to the stretch. He pitched to Raj, high and away, ball two, two and one. You will note, and as you have already noted, perhaps particularly in the last two weeks, unless Mantle and Maris go grab to that first pitch, these pitches really work on them. They move that ball in and out, in and out, up and down. Ready now for the 2-1 delivery. Jim Perry steps off the rubber. Naturally, trying to get him set up for a given pitch. You have to work on him. And now this time, uh, Maris asks, for time and steps out. Two balls, one strike. Perry to the stretch, Richardson to the short lead. The right-hander sets, delivers, and it is swung on and fouled off to the left of the plate. 2-2. Two, two. What they've been doing, Lizy, is changing speeds on them a lot. Trying to uh, waste the fastball, except in the case of Grant, who was overpowering the other night. Now the fastball had tailed away, too. But other than that, they try to uh, uh, throw for the strike. Slow stuff. Change the speed, change the pace. Slow curve. Two balls, two strikes, one out. And Jim Perry ready. Delivers. Outside. Ball three, three and two. Three, two count on Raj. And, of course... Maris or Mantle will try to wait for a pitch. And there are times you wait a little too long. So with one away, we'll watch Richardson for the 3 2 count on him. Anyway, it makes for exciting uh, watching. The stretch. Throw to first, Richardson's back. It was close. 
Bobby generally hits the dirt coming back. So it makes it look closer than uh, when a man just walks back to the bag. Power standing behind Richardson uh, sneaks in uh, toward the bag. Now the stretch. There goes Bobby. The pitch is low. Ball four. Maris walks. Richardson moves to second. Up comes Mantle, hitting 316. Mantle has tailed off in his hitting lately. During the past week, he's only had three hits. One away, two on. Jim Perry's delivery. Outside, ball one. Yogi Bear on deck. Early part of the week, Maris had five hits and then uh, has missed since uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday. One ball, no strikes. Runners lead away from first and second. One out. Jim Perry ready. And the pitch to Mantle. Low and inside. Ball two. Two and nothing. Outfield swung way around to the right. Romani at second and Power at first and almost shake hands. Not quite that extreme, but they're very close together. Held way over back a second. Next pitch is over. Strike one. Ten one. Two balls, one strike. But a lot of people forget, you got to give a pitcher credit for being able to put a ball in a spot he wants to. No hitter ever lived and had some weak spot. Two and one the count. Now the stretch, runners lead away from first and second. And the delivery. Swung on, there's the drive to keep right field. That ball is going, going, it is gone. come for. And I would say this to you, that the outcome of the game, the many of them are in, is incidental. The next pitch is high for a ball. I mean to many of the thousands. Naturally, you have the Cleveland adherents, and you have many uh, pro-Yankee fans who've come from Buffalo and Niagara Falls. The delivery swung on line in the right field for a base hit. Willie Kirkland puts the throw back in, and the Indian bullpen gets the call as Barra lines a single to right. Steps up, hitting 355. The pitch is over for a strike. Mantle's home run was his first in August 13th. Jim Perry ready. And the pitch. Almost hit power. It gets away, but no advance. Ball spun away from Romero. Dick Sigmund, the left hander, gets up in the bullpen. Early, yeah. 
One ball, one strike. Jim Perry delivers. Swung on to high foul beyond first and going to go out of play. A one-two count. One ball, two strikes. Perry set, one away. They're off first. Here's the pitch. Makes him hit the ground. 2-2, two, two, high and tight. Ready for the 2-2 two, two pitch. Here it is. Swung on. They hit the box off the knee of the pitcher. Perry up and it throws the power to retire Howard. That was a hard crash that normally goes through the middle. It hit the knee, partially on the knee or leg and glove of Perry. The ball caromed off towards the first baseline. He ran over, picked it up to retire Howard with his throw to power, moving there to second. Bringing up Bill Scallon, batting 271. has his right wrist pick. Barra on second with two down. Jim Perry ready and the pitch. He gets away from Romano and on the third goes Barra. Pass ball. One ball, no strike. Two away, first inning, three to nothing New York. Now Romano walks out to say something to Jim Perry while Dick Sigmund continues to warm up in the bullpen. One ball, no strike. Bear on third, two outs. Here's the pitch to Moose. Swung on and foul back. The 1-1 one, one delivery. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Changed it to a wild pitch, figuring that Perry crossed up the catcher. Here's the delivery. Swung on the high chopper to short. Held has it. Fires on the first in time, and the side is retired. For New York, three runs on Mickey Mantle's 46th home run of the year with two aboard. Three hits, no errors, and one left on. End of the first half, the first inning. New York three, Cleveland coming to bat. Next time, take along a six-pack, a jolly six-pack of Valentine beer. It carries with ease, cools in a breeze. And best of all, it gives you six icy cold cans of the crisp refresher. Take along a six-pack, jolly, jolly six-pack of ice cold Valentine beer. Perry doing the pitching for New York. As the Indians come up in the last half of the first inning, Ken Asmani, Jimmy Pearsall, and Tito Francona, the first three batters. Ken 
Chris Romani coming up. Ralph Terry in his 22nd appearance, an 18th start. He worked 116 and two-thirds innings. The first pitch in there for a strike. Ralph has allowed 104 hits in 116 and two-thirds innings. Walked 36, struck out 59. Now the pitch. Slow curve, swung on and missed. Strike two, nothing in two. He's been throwing a lot more uh, slow stuff since he uh, came up with the slow arm. No balls, two strikes. Carry to the wind-up, and the pitch is swung on, bounced towards short. And from the hole, Boyer makes the throw and gets him. Went way over in behind Gardner to make the play. The same kind of play that a fellow like, oh, let's say Jim Landis of the White Sox or Aparicio would have beaten out. Just give you a comparison. Here's Jimmy Pearsall. Batting 338. Asmani was hitting 268 before he was retired. Jimmy Pearsall, right-hand batter. Now the pitch, swung on, hit choppy. A one grab, one hot grab by Boyer. Throw to first in time. He hits the ball hard. A wicked liner. Boyer broke to his left and spurred it on the hop and threw him out. Boy, you should have seen the ball that Pearsall hit for the final out in the 10th inning yesterday. You gave Arroyo a credit for a save of Ford. You had to give Gardner the save. He came up with tremendous play. Tito Francona up and the pitch. Low ball one. Tito batting 295. 3 nothing New York, last the first. Now the pitch is high, ball two, two nothing. Willie Kirkland is on deck. Ralph Perry has shown uh, Francona two medium speed pitches. One medium speed and the last one uh, slow. Here's the pitch, fastball, rammed out to second. Up with it is Richardson, flips on the scound, in time, and the side is retired. I tell you, all three balls are pretty well hit that inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. Down to the first thing, New York three, and Cleveland, nothing. Elsewhere today, we'll be reporting on games in, in uh, Kansas City, where the White Sox are there for a doubleheader. Baltimore leads Washington two to nothing. It's in the two and a half innings. Estrada against Donovan. They're playing a pair, as well as Boston, Detroit. Single game, Minnesota. At Los Angeles. In the National League, Philadelphia is at Milwaukee for one game, uh, or rather for two games. St. Louis, Cincinnati, one game. Los Angeles, San Francisco, one. Pittsburgh, Chicago, one. I suppose you got all of the scores from yesterday. In the event, some of you got earlier additions. The Yankees beat the Indians 3 2 in 10 innings, while Detroit beat Boston 3 2. Baltimore shut out Washington 5 0. Chicago beat Kansas City 5 to 3, Minnesota trimmed Los Angeles 5 to 3. In the, the National League, Cincinnati defeated St. Louis 3 to 1 last night, while uh, San Francisco was shutting out Los Angeles 5 0 to give the Reds a three game bulge. Pittsburgh went 11 innings before beating the Cubs 4 to 3, and Milwaukee beat Philadelphia 4 to 3 so that the Phils lost their 22nd straight game for a new Major League record. I'll tell you this, they've been in a lot of ball games where it must have really been exasperating to them where, you know, they almost had one or lost by one run. In the first or second, Jim Perry's pitching to Cleet Boyer. And his pitch is outside, ball one. Boyer hitting 231 on the season. Being a little better lately. 
The right hander's next pitch swung on, popped up. It's toward first. Here comes Big Power and fouls on. Now Romano, the ball drops between them. They got mixed up on it. Either that or that wind I've been telling you about. Romano, as the ball started out, it did look like a ball power might handle. And it's easier for an infielder coming in to handle it than a catcher going out. But that wind, uh, that ball is hit straight up and high, and the wind apparently drove it back towards the plate. And Romano had given up on it, waiting for a power. All right, here's the next pitch, and Boyer takes the strike over the outside corner. One and two. There's no error charged on the play. And the next pitch. Swung on and fouled off. Ball spun out of the mid of uh, Romano. Hit him on the arm. We should not be at all surprised if uh, more of those things happen today. One ball, two strikes. And the delivery. It's low, 2-2. Two, two. two balls, two strikes. Man, we've been running some wild weather here this year. Hot one day and winter the next. Next pitch is outside, ball three, three and two. I think I'll just buy me some winter clothes and store them here. In case uh, something happens. Got him around. And the 3 2 pitch swung on, hit foul down the left field line. Count remains 3 and 2. Small hand for the ball boy who made uh, better than an average catch of that ball. The 3 2 delivery swung on, grounded out to short. Woody held up with it, slip on the big power in time. One away. through the ball to Romano to start whipping it around the bases and Romano dropped it. Which occasioned uh, the outburst. Ralph Terry coming up. Ralph has had 12 for 42. 286 season average. Jim Perry to the wind up the pitch to swung on and foul back out of play. Strike one. New York three, Cleveland nothing. It's the second inning. Perry working fast now, delivers. There's a drive lined in the center, but Pearsall is back there to take it. He had to reach out behind him, too. Two away. Now Bobby Richardson to open the game with a single to center. One of his favorite tricks lately has been to, in leading off a game, hit the ball through the middle for a base hit. Two away. Bobby's taking a little time now to give Terry a chance to get that extra breath or two. He gets back to the dugout. Lanky Jim Perry to the wind-up. The pitch is inside, perhaps a little high. Bobby bluffed the bunt. Keeping Bubba Phillips on the move. Now the one nothing offering on the way. Swung on, lined into deep center. There goes Pearsall back. He's going to get under it and has it. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. At the end of an inning and a half, New York three, Cleveland nothing. And talking to Jimmy Dykes last night, he... We got to talking about different players, and we were talking about the home run he robbed Mantle of with a racing, leaping grab near the center field fence. He said, I've seen a lot of them. He said, don't anybody tell you that boy can't go get the ball. Now, of course, that's the fact that you and I have known for years. Just like a fact that you and I have known for years that all the good things you want in beer are here today and Valentine beer. You see, the brewers of Valentine beer have found that today's beer drinkers demand two things in the beer they enjoy. One, 
lightness. Two, flavor. Valentine has put over 120 years of know-how into brewing a beer that combines the best of both these important qualities. Today's Valentine is sunny, light as you like it, with all the mellow lager flavor you want. This special combination makes it the crisp refresher. Enjoy Valentine. Now, your first swallow and each one to follow will tell you why more than five million glasses of Valentine beer enjoyed every day. Try a golden glass full yourself. The crisp refresher. BB Valentine beer. We pause for station identification. This is WOKO, 1460 on the radio dial in Albany, New York. In 25 seconds, two minutes past two. Willie Kirkland, the left-hand batter, leads off on the last of the second. Ralph Terry doing the pitching, 3 nothing, New York. Kirkland hitting 253. Ralph Terry's pitch swung on as a ground ball hit out to short. Boyer up with it, throws to first in time, one away. Hits that back ball right off the end of his bat. One away. Now Bubba Phillips, batting 276. What a year this young man's been having. The man from Mississippi has driven in more runs than ever, 70 in his career. And his previous high with the White Sox is 42. Fast man, chunkily Bill, the right-hand batter. The pitch change up, and he takes it for a strike. Actually, uh, we make a mistake in broadcasting a lot of times and calling a first pitch a change up or a change of pace. That's the first pitch he's seen, so he's had no pace to change on him, but it's uh, it was a slow pitch. The kid used to call it a slow ball. Now the delivery, another one, and that tilt deep to left. Yogi goes back, still going back, and one hands it. Now, oh, about that Yogi. Backhand, one-hand catch of Bubba Phillips. Good drive. Now Johnny Romano. Hitting 302. The boy from Hoboken who lives in Ridgefield. I guess we've said that a lot of times this year, but the delivery of the right-hand batter is in there for a strike. As being from the metropolitan area, if we don't mention it, somebody say, why didn't you? So we do. Now the pitch to Johnny. Been there. Strike two. Got a fastball over the outside corner. No balls. Two strikes. The man that looks up at the flag out there is really whipping out toward right now. Here's the pitch. And it just misses. A little bit low. One and two. One ball. Two strikes. One two delivery. Swung on, hit sharply the second. Richardson up with it, puts on to the Moose in time. Moose throws it to Howard. They forgot there were three outs. They were going to start to whip it around, but Howard looked for everybody run off the field and everybody to throw it to. And Yogi gets a hand as he comes in. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. At the end of two innings, New York three, Cleveland nothing. On Mantle's three-run home run in the first inning. Three runs, three hits, no errors, and the Indians three up and three down. I'll tell you something about Yogi. Uh, he's pretty good on balls he can get to, and he'll be the first to tell you. This is not negative criticism, but a line drive, say, between the outfielders where uh, some younger and faster a man or somebody been playing the outfield always would cut off an older single get by Yogi for doubles and triples, but otherwise, he'll every once in a while come up with a sparkler on a ball in the air. 
Baltimore two, Washington nothing, end of three. Estrada and Donovan. And that's all we have to offer for you at the present time. But our menu will be uh, fuller later. Billy Gardner leads off in the third inning. The pitch from Perry. It's in there for a strike. Gardner started to bunt, held back. Now he looks around at Sam Carrigan to ask whether it was a strike or whether he called it because he bluffed his bunt. No balls, one strike. Perry to the wind up the pitch. It's low outside. A one one count. Roger Maris on deck. And the one one pitch. Swung on, bounce. Out over second and into center for a base hit. Gardner singles to center. You know, Billy's been playing good ball here the uh, last couple of days with uh, Kubek out with still arm. Boyer shifted to short. Now Roger Maris. And listen to the crowd. You know, even Cleveland fans who want Cleveland to win. But still, they'd like to win by one run or two, whatever. But they'd like, or 50, but they'd like to see these two guys homer. It has been a tremendously exciting thing over the United States. Pitch to Rod, tying away, ball one. You know, uh, I guess those of us are very close to it. Well, obviously, uh, intrigued. Didn't realize uh, the excitement has been generated since our last road trip through these parts. Here's the delivery. Swung on and fouled back. One and one. For example, we discovered that the Cleveland newspapers have been uh, putting the results of the, the Indians' second, uh, second headline, the top headlines, than what Maris and Mandel have been doing. Jim Perry's pitch. Outside, ball two, two and one. So it is struck the fancy of the nation as to whether these men will or won't. Say this, he's going to have to hurry if he do. The 2 1 pitch. Swung on, it's foul down the first baseline. 2 2. I would like to say now, uh, right here, in case anybody has any thoughts about it, the men themselves, obviously, as anyone uh, who's interested in achievement, would like to be able to do it, but they are first and foremost team men hoping to try and help the team stay in first place. And Jim Perry's 2-2 two -two pitch. Outside, ball three, three and two. Full count now on Raj. And Vic Power signals to the pitcher he's going to play in behind Gardner. The stretch, ready for the payoff pitch. Here it is. There goes Gardner. And there is the drive to deep right field. It is going, going. It is gone. How about that? Number 49. Maris coming home behind Gardner. And Mickey Mantle shakes his hand at home plate. And it's 5 to nothing, New York. Dial M for murder. Thunder and lightning have struck in Cleveland. Hale's on the bench. Here's Mickey Mantle, who homered in the first inning with two on. Five to nothing, New York. Perry to the windup and the pitch. Tying away, ball one. So Maris hits his 49th after Mantle hit his 46th in the first inning. And the delivery. Swung on and fouled off to the right of the plate, one and one. Roger Maris has now driven in 116 runs. And the delivery. Swung on and fouled off to the right of the plate, one and one. Roger Maris has now driven in 115 runs. Mantle, 109. That was Maris' first hit of this series. 
the pitch low and inside and bounces back to the screen. You know, it seldom happens that people travel so many miles, and they have come from way, way away, and have seen both these boys deliver. There's a high fly ball. It's not going anywhere. Just a straightaway center deep, and Pearsall has it. It started out like it might, but we could tell. Watch Jimmy. Deep right center. One away. And here's Yogi Berra. Single to right field in the first inning. They have uh, teamed up to be an exciting pair this year. Five to nothing, New York. Yogi single to right in the first inning. And Jim Perry's delivery high and away. Dick Sigmund in the bullpen. And the one nothing pitch. It's over. Strike one. One and one. And Yogi steps away and looks at Sam Kerrigan and says, That's you, Sam? Kerrigan, private eye. We kid him about that. You know, it sounds like uh, one of those names of one of those shows, you know, TV shows. Here's the pitch. And that hits Yogi on the foot. So he goes to first base. Actually, uh, Sam in his rookie year is doing a very fine job of umpiring. It's a good team, by the way. Cal Drummond and the veterans, Ed Runge and Joe Paparella. Cal Hubbard, supervisor of American League umpires, is here today. Elston Howard taps to the box in the first inning. One on, one out, two in. Jim Perry's pitch swung on and ripped foul back to the screen. Strike one. Balls, one strike. Jim Perry ready. And the pitch. Low and inside. Ball one. A little while ago, I said we haven't gotten quite as excited about the M men. I, uh, I left out one thing. As soon as they hit 50, either one of them, that's when you start getting excited. The 1 1 pitch. It's in there, strike two. And Rods now is just one away. That's when you really get the goose pimples. One ball, two strikes. Farrell leads off first. One away. Jim Perry's delivery. Swung on, foul back to the screen. Count remains one and two. Perry again to the stretch. And the pitch. Right over. Call strike three. Cardelli looking. Now here's the Moose, who grounded a short in the first inning. Gowan, batting 271. Bear on first with two down in the third inning. Five to nothing, New York. Jim Perry ready to work. He pitched to Scarron, swung on and fouled off. Strike one. Dick Sigmund continues to loosen up. It's entirely possible with Perry, a scheduled third hitter in the third inning, he may pinch hit, but we'll see. Now the delivery. Swung on and fouled off. Strike two. Nothing in two. No balls, two strikes. And the pitch. Swung on, grounded down the first baseline, a fair ball. Yogi round second, hits for third. Garen rounds first, hits for second. The throw goes to the plate. Barra stops at third. The throw is cut off by Jim Perry. Instead of backing up home, he stakes himself between first and the plate and cuts the ball off. 
generally the pitcher is supposed to back up the catcher in case of an overthrow. There's been nobody backing up the plate. Scouring doubles down the first baseline. One of the few times that we've ever seen Vic Power let a ball get by him. With Cleet Boyer up, they're going to put him on with first base open and two down. Boyer will get an intentional pass. Ralph Perry will be coming up. He lined the center in the second inning. Ralph is better than average uh, hitting pitcher. 12 for 42 when the game began, hitting 286. Boyer on first, Scarron on second, Barra on third. Two out, two in, New York five, and the Indians nothing. Remember now, we'll be talking to you from Los Angeles, 1055, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night. Open date tomorrow. Jim Perry to the windup, and he fires the pitch over. Strike one. Nothing in one. Bear on third. Garron on second. Boyer on first. Perry again to the windup, and the pitch. As a throw down to first, the runner's back. Pitch was the ball. One and one. Romano tried to pick off Boyer with Powers playing deep, suddenly breaking in. Three men lead away, and the pitch. Swung on the high, dropped the third. Phillips has it, fires on the first in time, and the side's retired. Two runs for New York on Roger Maris, 49th home run of the year. Of Gardner Board. Three hits, no errors, and three men left on. At the end of three innings of play, New York five runs, six hits. I mean, at the end of two and a half innings of play, New York five runs, six hits, no errors, four left on. And the Indians three up and three down over the first two innings. The Christmas pressure is icily light. With two large flavors, it's icily light. The Christmas pressure is icily light. Lively golden, crystally clear. The Christmas pressure, crispy pressure, down, 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 With your first swallow and every one to follow, today's Valentine delivers a sunny, mellow taste that really refreshes. Since people know quality when they taste it, over five million glasses of Valentine beer are enjoyed every day. So clap your hands, clap your feet, clap your fingers, find out the man for Valentine. The Christmas pressure, Valentine, Valentine beer. Since 1840, America's finest. inning, Vic Power leads off, but he held on deck. Dick Stigman continues to limber up, so we'll see whether or not there'll be a pinch hitter for Perry. Ralph Perry's delivery in there, strike one. Power hitting 253. Five to nothing Yankees, last of the third. Ralph Perry's next pitch in there for a strike. Nothing in two. And Power kicks dirt over the plate. Didn't like the call. Perry into the windup, and the curveball is outside into the dirt. One and two. And then Power turns around and says something to Carrigan. One ball, two strikes. The one-two pitch. Swung on, bounced 
to third. Gardner put it one-handed. Throws the first in time. Power grounding to Gardner. Who broke over to his left to scoop that ball. Glove-handed. Here's what he held. Batting 273. Continuing to warm up. Nobody out on deck yet, and we're going to have a pinch hitter. Here's the pitch to hell swung on and fouled off. It's going to be Bond, Walt Bond, who has been recalled. There's a fellow I thought two years ago was really going to make it big. He still may make it big, but he's been farmed out twice. He's big to start with, Walt Bond. But right now, the pitch to Woody Held. In there for a strike, loving in two. Here's the next delivery. Swung on, hit foul, but I have the plate out of play. New York five, Cleveland nothing. It's the last of the third. the pitch. Curve is lined to third. Right to Gardner. And they're two away. And Walt Bond is coming up to bat for Jim Perry. Bond was recalled from Salt Lake on August the 12th. Started out the season with the Indians. Left hand batter, tremendous man. Here's a pitch. High ball one. He stands six six and weighs two hundred and twenty eight. The one nothing pitch. Swung on, grounded, foul down the first baseline. With Salt Lake, he hit 284. Now the pitch. Swung on and foul back. Two strikes. Five nothing New York, third inning. Bond batting for Perry. And Terry's pitch changeup is swung on and missed. Dropped by Howard. He drags out Bond, and the side is retired. Gave him a big motion, pulled the string on him. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. So Jimmy Dykes doesn't waste much time in bringing in the left-hander, which managers like to do if they've got one. But you know, the White Sox started three against New York. So that tends to neutralize, uh, percentage-wise, your left-hand hitters. Mantle can turn around. But yet, of course, uh, Mantle batting right-handed, by the way. Has more power, but he tomahawks the ball more batting right handed, which means he'll hit more on the ground than getting in the air. That's an added uh, element involved, insofar as he's concerned. And uh, while Maris has had some homers off left handers, but you play your percentage. And so Dick Stigman, who's got a good motion, comes in. And I'd like to make a motion right now. I'd like to move that whether you folks are outdoors or in, and you got a real good thirst worked up, let's call time for Valentine. And when you go shopping, take along a six-pack of Valentine beer. Several six-packs. You'll refresh with a crisp refresher. All in favor, say aye. 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 
I heard you. Well, everybody's got to make a living. Baltimore 6, Washington nothing at the end of three and a half innings. Estrada against Donovan. Hobart relieved Donovan in the fourth. Boston, Detroit, Conley, and Larry. To the left in Milwaukee, short and spot. And Pittsburgh, Chicago, Brandon Cardwell, and right here, Phil Rizzuto. We're going to go over now and spend the rest of the first game on television. We'll be talking to you during the second game. From Dick Sigmund to Phil Rizzuto. Okay, Mel, and Bobby Richardson swings at the first pitch and misses strike one. Bobby singled and scored and then fly to center. Sigmund's pitch is butted, but right back to the box. Sigmund up with it, wheels around, fires to power, and Richardson is out. If Bobby had gotten that by the pitcher, he'd have had himself a base hit. One away. Bring up Billy Garden. A fly to right, single to center, he scored. Jim Perry pitched just three innings, allowing... Six base hits, walking two, striking out one, allowing five runs. Sigmund's curve is swung at and missed strike one. Mickey Mantle hit a three-run home in the first inning, and Maris a two-run home in the third. That's been the scoring. Pitch is low. One-one on Gardner. Wind up. Pitch outside. Two balls, one strike. Two one pitch is pop foul coming back out of play in the upper deck. Two and two the count. One out, nobody on. Two two pitch, a fly ball to right field. Willie Kirkland is moving under it and takes it for the second out. And here's Roger Maris, who walks and Homer, number 49 on the year. Listen to the crowd. Roger scored ahead of Mantle's home in the first, and then Homer with Gardner on in the third. So he scored twice and driven in two. Two out, the pitch to Marin. Curve high, ball one. Rod has to duck a little. Pitch to the strike. He started a swing, checked it, but it was over. One one on Marin. Well, wish that sun would come out today. Boy, this is a cold, dreary day in Cleveland. Now the 1-1 pitch. Inside. Two balls, one strike. Sigmund decides to change baseballs. Mickey Mantle on deck, got his right hand hitting bat, and taking a couple of swings in the on deck circle. Pitch to Maris, checks the swing, it's low, three and one, a sharp breaking curve. Now 
another 3 1 delivery. Foul back. Boy, he had his fastball. Just got under it a little. Fouled it back in the upper deck. It's a full count now on Maris. And again, Stigman wants to change baseball. Ready for the payoff pitch. Here it is, and it's low ball four. Maris walks for the second time, and it brings up Mickey Mantle, who will home it in the first inning, fly deep to center in the third. Batting right-handed for the first time in the ball game. Stein looking at the handle of his bat, checking it to see if it's flipped. Jimmy Pearsall is as far back as he can go in deep center field. He's back to the fence. The pitch is low and away, ball one. He is really back there. Leading off first. The curve high inside. Mickey goes down. Ball two, two and nothing. Now the two nothing pitch. Over strike one, two and one. first, Maris back. Stretch by Stigman. Pitch is swing and a miss, strike two, two and two. Boy, he had a cut at that fastball. These fellas see so few fastballs that they swing at them almost no matter where they are. But they can't reach them. to the count. Pitch, curve, high, ball three, and it's a full count. Maris will be off with the pitch. Three and two, two out. New York leading five nothing in the top of the fourth. Now the stretch. The payoff pitch. There goes Maris. A drive to short center. And that ball is going to drop in there for a base hit. And Maris is held up at third. He was going. And with Pearsall playing so deep in center field, Mantle not trying to do it, but hit it off the end of his bat in short center. And it dropped in for a base hit. A first hit off Stigman. Maris almost scored from first base on that single. He was off with the pitch. Had rounded third when Corsetti told him to put on the brakes, and Rod did. He skid it to a stop. So it's two out, and here's Yogi. Yogi singled him, was hit by a pitch ball. Two out, Mandela at first, Maris at third. Out on deck, the stretch and the pitch to Yogi. Strike on the outside corner. playing very shallow now in center. The pitch on the outside corner again, strike two, and Yogi steps back again and looks back at Sam Carrigan. With a look that only Yogi can give an umpire. Not a mean look, kind of a sad look. Like he's going to start crying or something. The two-strike pitch, a fly ball to right field. Willie Kirkland is right there, and he takes it. For the Yankees, in the top of the fourth, no runs, one hit, no Indian errors. Two men left. At the end of three and a half, it's New York five, the Indians nothing. 
Take along a six-pack, a jolly six-pack of Valentine beer. It carries with ease, cools in a breeze. And best of all, it gives you six icy cold cans of the crisp refresher. Take along a six-pack, jolly, jolly six-pack of ice cold Valentine beer. Now let's pause for station identification. For music and news, a friendly voice is the voice of radio. Good sound broadcasting for 1961. This is Quality Modern, WOKO in Albany, New York. The time, 23 minutes before 3 p.m. Ralph Terry, who retired the first nine Indians that he faced, will be facing the top of their batting order again. Aspromani, Pearsall, and Fran Corner. Aspermani bounced to the shortstop in the first inning, batting 262. 5-0, New York leads. Terry ready. His pitch to Astromani. First ball popped in the air. The shortstop Cleet Boyer is right there, and Astromani fires his bat down on the ground. Cleet has it. It's one away. And that's 10 up and 10 down against Ralph. Here's Pearsall, who hit a hot shot to the left of Boyer. Cleet made a fine play to grab it and throw him out. Jimmy digging a big hole in the plate. Getting a firm grip with his feet. First ball hit high in the air to left center. Mantle right there. Two pitches and two out here in the fourth inning. Brings up Tito Francona, who bounced to second base in the first inning. On deck, Willie Kirkland. Nobody on. Very curve high, ball one. Slow curve in the dirt. Ball two, two or nothing. You can tell it's chilly. Every Yankee ball player has a long sleeve sweatshirt on. Downs is just below the elbows, but usually they wear those real shorties in the hot weather. High fly to center. Mickey Mantle coming in under it. And Mick takes it for the out. So there's 12 men in a row that Terry has, re- has faced and retired. And at the end of four innings, it's the Yankees five and the Indians nothing. All goose eggs on the scoreboard for the Indians all the way across the wire. Baltimore is leading the Washington Center. Six to three at the end of four and a half. Chicago's at Kansas City for a pair. Boston at Detroit for two. First game is just getting underway. It's Conley against Larry. Minnesota at Los Angeles single game is not started. The National League, Philadelphia at Milwaukee. Los Angeles at San Francisco has not started. St. Louis at Cincinnati, the league leading Cincinnati Reds, I might add, with a three game lead over the Los Angeles Dodgers. Just getting on the way to Decky against O'Toole. And Pittsburgh at Chicago is friend against Cardwell. The Pirates failed to score. 
in the top of the first. And now, friends, back to the ball game, Curtis. Fifty-two. Nick Stigman in place of Jim Perry sends a curve high ball one. Howard and Norm Cash started this ball game tied at a batting average of three fifty-five apiece. But Elliott has lost three points. Pitches high ball two, two and nothing. On deck, Bill Scowlin. Two nothing pitch over strike call. Fast ball on the outside part of the plate. The two one pitch is swing and a miss. Strike two two and two. delivery. Ground ball in the hole and out to left field the base hit. So Howe is on with his first base hit of the ball game. The second hit off Stigman and the eighth hit for the Yankees. It brings up Bill Scourin. Bounced to short, doubled down the right field line. Moose batting 272. leading off first. Hits the scow and swing and a miss strike one. Cleet Boyer on deck. Next pitch is on the outside corner. That was a screwgee. A screwball by Stigman. strike pitch. Strike three calls. Three pitches and Moose is out of there. First strike out for Stigman. Here's Cleet Boyer. Bounced to short and walked. Walked intentionally in the third inning. Catching the pitch to Boyer. Ground foul over Corsetti's head down the third baseline. One strike on Cleet Boyer. Stretch and the Scrooge is swung at a missed strike two as Boyer was way out in front. We haven't seen Stigman throw that pitch too often. He's been working on that in the bullpen. The two-strike pitch. High pop-up to the infield. Bubba Phillips and Vic Power coming in. And Vic Power calling for it makes the catch in fair territory. About 10 feet in front of the plate. A lot of the fans wondering why Romano doesn't take them. They're tough, much tougher for the catcher to get than for the first baseman or the third baseman, even though they have a long run. Here's Ralph Terry, line to center, bounce to third. Two out, Yankees five, Indians nothing in the top of the fifth. Pitch to Ralph is low, ball one. brief rain and windstorm last night here caused quite a bit of damage didn't last long but around Lake Erie you never know what's going to happen pitch the cherry swing and a miss strike one one on one stretch and the pitch is one of that miss strike two Terry trying to push that ball between the pitcher and first base. 
Wanted right through it. Pitch to Terry. Strike three called. He's out of there. Second strikeout for Stigman and for the Yankees in the top of the fifth. No runs, one hit. No Indian errors, one man left at the end of four and a half. It's the Yankees five and the Indians nothing. You know, this is the time of year when vacation planning becomes an important family topic. And out come the resort folders and the roadmaps. Well, wherever you're going on your vacation, and we hope you still have it, you can add to the pleasure of your trip by starting now to use Atlantic Imperial, the gasoline that cleans your carburetor as you're driving. Dirt deposits that build up on the lower carburetor walls can rob you of driving pleasure by interfering with the carefully adjusted action of the throttle plate. Now, this results in rough idling, frequent stalling, and gasoline waste. Most carburetors have these deposits, but now it's easy to get rid of them for good. In a few thousand miles of everyday driving, Atlantic Imperial washes this carburetor dirt harmlessly away. And continued use will keep new deposits from forming. So get ready for vacation time now. Join the millions of car owners from New England to Florida who are using Atlantic Imperial. Remember, Atlantic Imperial is the quality gasoline that cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean. Willie Kirkland leads off as we move into the bottom of the fifth inning. And Ralph Terry has yet to permit anybody to get to first base anyway. Lopez has replaced Barra in left field without any immediate explanation. Yogi was hit by a pitch, but it didn't appear at the time that he was hurt. Well, let's get in with Phil now. All right, Willie Kirkland steps into the batter's box. Yankees scored three in the first, a three-run homer by Mantle, and two in the third, a two-run homer by Maris. That's all the scoring in the ball game. Terry taking too much time, so Kirkland steps out of the box. But first asking for time from the umpire. Now Terry's ready. His first pitch is a fastball that's low, ball one. Bubba Phillips is on deck. One-nothing pitch is high and away, ball two, two two-and-nothing. Two-nothing pitch, right in there, strike call, two and one. One delivery. The curve swung it and missed strike two, two and two. Now the two, two delivery. Fastball fouled back in the upper deck. Oh, what a beautiful play a fan made on that. A one-handed catch. He's being congratulated by all the fans around him. Two-two changeup is lying to right field. Foul oh, ball! Oh man, that ball must have been fouled by a hair thing. Kirkland and Magaha looking and Sharon standing right there. That ball must have just missed the foul line. That was really close. Count holds it two and two. All right, 
Mike Kirkland back in the batter's box. Now Cherry ready. Fastball foul back in the upper deck. <laughs> that ball really bounced around in and out of hand. A lot of fans will not drop what they have in their hands, whether it's a scorecard, a bag of peanuts, or what. Try and catch it one-handed. Curve in the dirt, rolls back to the screen. Full count on Kirkland. for the payoff pitch. There it is, and it's a ground ball to Scar, and Moose is up with it. Races to the bag for the unassisted putout. And that's 13 men in a row that Terry has faced, and not one Indian has reached first base. Here's Bubba Phillips who line deep to left field in the second inning. Yogi making a nice backhand running catch. inside, ball one. One nothing fastball is over, strike one, one on one. On deck is Johnny Romano. 1-1 one, one pitch high, ball 2-2-1. Two, two, On deck is Johnny Romano. 1-1 one, one pitch high, ball 2-2-1. Two, 2-1 two, one. Two, one curve is high, ball 3-3-1. Three, three Here's the 3-1 pitch. It's popped in the air outside third, Billy Gardner. And Howard chasing it, and Gardner near the Yankee dugout makes a one-hand catch and then takes a step in the dugout. A pretty play by Billy Gardner on a high foul ball. And he had to be careful not to fall down the steps. The Yankee defense has been tremendous behind Ralph Terry. As Ralph has retired 14 men in a row, and here's Johnny Romano who bounced to second base. Romano batting 301. Pitch to Johnny, a curve line right at Boyle for the out. Man, I tell you, there have been some hard hit balls, but the Yankee infielders and outfielders have been right there as Terry retires 15 men in a row in the first five innings. No Indian has reached first base, nothing across for Cleveland. In the bottom of the fifth and at the end of five, it's the Yankees five and the Indians nothing. Well, the tension's going to build up in this ball game from here on out, as far as Terry's concerned. In the American League, Chicago and Kansas City prepare. They have not started. Baltimore and Washington, the first game, a doubleheader. The Orioles, eight, Washington, three at the end of five and a half. Johnson, homing in the fourth with two on for the Senators. It's a starter going for Baltimore. Donovan started Hobo in the fourth. Boston at Detroit. The Red Sox failed to score on the top of the first inning of the first game of the doubleheader. Conley against Larry. Minnesota at Los Angeles has not started. The National League, Philadelphia at Milwaukee. The Phillies failed to score on the top of the first. Milwaukee batting. Short against Spahn. St. Louis at Cincinnati. The Cardinals scored one on the top of the first. The Decky against O'Toole. Los Angeles at San Francisco has not started. And Pittsburgh, nothing. The Cubs, nothing at the end of an inning and a half. Friend against Cardwell. The word on Yogi Berra is that he was hit on the right instep when he was up at bat against Jim Perry, and it's bothering him a little bit. But he is expected to be ready for the second game if he is needed. 
For the Yankees, it'll be the top of their batting order. Richardson, Gardner, and Maris to face Dick Stigman. Bobby Single, fly to center, was thrown out attempting to beat out a bunt. The pitch to Richardson is high ball one. Yankees five, Indians nothing. A ground ball to Vic Power. He's up with it. Flips to Stigman. He's safe at first. He beats Stigman to the bag. Bobby Richardson's going to get himself a base hit. As he hustled down the first baseline, Vic Power caught the ball. He could have run the first to beat Richardson. But he waited for Stigman to come over, and he threw the ball to Stigman, but Bobby beat him to the bag. So it's an infield single. The third hit off Stigman. And the ninth Yankee hit of the ball game. Richardson second. Here's Billy Gardner. Fly to right twice and single once. He scored once. Pitch to Gardner. Bunted down the first baseline. It goes foul. Who is down at second comes back to first base. Again, the stretch by Stigman. Pitch is a foul back on the screen. Nothing in two. Detroit scored two runs in the bottom of the first. They lead the Red Sox 2-0 at the end of one. Trying to keep pace with the Yankees. They trail them by three games. Swings at a low curve ball for strike three. Richardson's going to second, though. Gardner is automatically out. There's strikeout to Sigmund, but Richardson went to second base. to check and see what they call that. A wild pitch. It's a strikeout and a wild pitch charged to Stigman. Allowing Richardson to go to second. Here's Roger Maris. Walked twice. Home it for his 49th of the year. Pitch to Roger. In there, strike one call. leading off second. Screw ball to Maris hit on the ground foul outside of first. The ball almost hit first base on by Cal Drummond. Vic had a big grin on his face. But Drummond had a look at the ball because it bounced just in front of the bag and had it gone over the bag, even had it landed foul, it would have been fair, but it kicked right just before it got to first base. Nothing in two on Maris. Pitch is a ground ball at second base. Astromani flips to Vic Power for the out. Richardson moves to third. And that brings up Mickey Mantle, who hit his 46th home of the year in the first inning. Fly to center, then single to center. Mick hit his with two men on. He's driven in three, and Maris two of the five Yankee runs. Two way. On deck is Hector Lopez, who will be batting in Barrett's spot in the lineup. Two out. Sigmund's wind up. His pitch is over. Strike one call. strike pitch. A ground ball. Base hit the left field. Richardson scores. And Mantle gets his third base hit of the ball game and his fourth run batted in. First run off Stigman and the Yankees lead 
Six to nothing. Madeline Maris had driven them all in. Here's Lopez. Yogi had singled, was hit by a pitch ball, and fly to right. Lopez up for his first time, batting 222. Pitch to Hector. High fly to right field. Willie Kirkland is there. And Willie takes it for the out. But the Yankees come up with another run on two base hits. No Indian errors. One man left, and at the end of five and a half, the Yankees six, the Indians nothing. You'll like the difference, or we'll pay the difference. Atlantic Imperial, the quality gasoline that cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean, is now backed by the clean carburetor test. Take it, and without risking an extra penny, discover yourself the wonderful difference a clean carburetor makes in your car's performance. Ask your Atlantic dealer for a receipt with each purchase of Atlantic Imperial. Then, after using 100 gallons of this fine gasoline, if you're not satisfied that it gives you less stalling, smoother idling, generally better performance, just mail the receipts to Atlantic. We'll refund the difference in cost between 100 gallons of Atlantic Imperial and the same amount of regular gasoline. You're the judge. you like the difference Atlantic Imperial makes, or we'll pay the difference. Let's pause for station identification. For music and news, a friendly voice is the voice of radio. Good sound broadcasting for 1961. This is Quality Modern, WOKO in Albany, New York. The time, one minute after 3 p.m. Leading off for the Indians will be Vic Farr here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Vic passed the third base in the third inning. Well, the fans buzz every time Madeline Maris gets up to the plate. And now they'll be buzzing on every hitter that gets up to the plate because Ralph Cherry, in the first five innings, has pitched to 15 men and retired all 15 of them. No Indian has seen first base yet. Can't get off the reservation. All right, here's Terry's pitch to Vic Fowler. And there's a base hit to left field, and that breaks the spell. <laughs> Vic Fowler becomes a base, base runner and the first man to get a hit off Terry. He had a perfect game going for five innings. Brings up Woody Harold, who lined a third in the third inning. We'll have a little action in the Indian bullpen. Looks like Bobby Locke again, doesn't it, Joe? That's who it is. Bobby Locke were relieved and was the losing pitcher in yesterday's ball game. Pitch to hell. Curve over. Strike call. Woody betting 273. This first chance the Indian fans have had to applaud that team. Mr. Harold is low ball one one one. Ready now for the one one pitch. Low and away, ball two, two and one. against Vic Power. Pitch to Harold inside ball three. Three and one. Now 
another stretch. Pitch is hit on the ground to third. Gardner to Richardson for one. Back to first. Double play. For the Yankees, their 143rd double play of the year. Five to four to three. Around the horn. It's two outs. And Dick Stigman is going to hit for himself. Bobby Locke now sits down. So even though Vic Power got the base hit, Terry has pitched to only 17 men in five and two-third innings. And that is the minimum. Here's Dick Sigmund batting 125. That's him right-handed, choking up on the bat. Terry's pitch is over. Strike call. Curve rolls back to the screen. One on one. One fastball swung it and missed strike two, and Sigman swung after the ball was in Howard's glove that time. He was a little late getting around. Pitch, strike three, swinging. That's Terry's second strikeout. For the Indians in the bottom of the sixth, no runs on their first hit of the ball game, no Yankee errors, and nobody left. And at the end of six full innings, the Yankees six runs, ten hits, no errors. The Indians no runs, one hit, and no errors. On the scoreboard in the American League, they have still not started out in Kansas City to call White Sox to there for a double head up. Baltimore is leading Washington 8-3 at the end of six and a half. The Red Sox are at Detroit for a pair. In the first game, it's Detroit 2, the Red Sox 1 at the end of an inning and a half. Minnesota at Los Angeles has not started. In the National League, the Phillies 2, Milwaukee nothing at the end of an inning and a half is Bobby Maltmitz from my hometown of Hillside, New Jersey, home in the second with a man on. Cardinals lead Cincinnati 1 0 at the end of an inning and a half. Los Angeles at San Francisco has not started. And Pittsburgh nothing and the Cubs nothing at the end of two and a half. For the Yankees, Elston Howard will lead off. Kelly is 1 for 3. Howard batting 354. Here's Sigmund's pitch to Alley. It's a curve over strike call. I have a lot of superstitious fans, not only here at the ballpark, but all over, who listen in. And if you mention no hitter and somebody gets a hit, they blame you for it. There's a foul coming back into the seats out of play. They're having a big argument back of us. One of these fans just happened to mention that Terry had a no hitter when Vic Fowler singled. So he'll have a miserable day for the rest of the day. His buddies will not be convinced that he didn't jinx Terry. Pitch to Howard is low and away. One ball, two strikes. Fastball foul back in the upper deck. Still one and two. Screwball strike three. Boy, Sigmund's come up with a new pitch, and it's a dandy. Yankee hit his way out in front. That's his fourth strikeout. Brings up the moose.
Dowling bounced a short, double a right, and was called out on strike. Swings and misses a fastball, strike one. Swing and a miss at another fastball, strike two. Nothing in two. Bigman comes in with another fastball, line to left, and fair ball, bouncing off the wall. Scoured around first. And he's going in a second with a stand-up double. So Sigmund threw two fastballs by the Moose. Tried to step another one by him. But Scourin ripped the double down the left field line. The fifth hit off Sigmund. The 11th hit for the Yankees. And that's Scourin's second base hit and his second double of this ball game. And it brings up Cleve Boyer. Boyer bounced a short, walked, and popped to first. One away. It's the boy is a ground foul outside of third, strike one. Yankees six and the Indians nothing. We're in the top of the seventh. Another big game to follow this one. Plenty of baseball on top around both major leagues today. Scrooge hit out to the pitcher. Garland holds his second. Stigman throws the first to retire Boyer. It's two out, and here's Ralph Terry. Terry lined to center, bounced to third, and was called out on strike. And the fans here appreciate Terry's efforts so far today and let them know it by their applause. Two outs, and Scar in a second. Pitch to Ralph, hit in the air to dead center field. Uh, Pierce all going back, he's got it though. Ball was hit well. For the Yankees in the top of the seventh, no runs, one hit, no Indian errors, one man left. At the end of six and a half, Yankees six, Indians nothing. What does a truck driver think about as he drives? You know, this is a pretty good life. New sights to see all the time. Yeah, when you get back home after a long trip, there waiting for you is your own car, all ready to go. Okay, lady, be my guest. Gosh, I'm glad that car of mine is running right again. Boy, remember how rough it used to idle? The way it stalled? That was a great day when Harry told me about Atlantic Imperial. The gasoline that cleans your carburetor as you drive. Yes, and keeps it clean. Now my little buddy drives like a dream. Take me out to the ball game. We get ready to go on the bottom of the seventh. And it'll be Astromani, Pearsall, and Francona to face Ralph Terry. Astromani bounced the short and popped the short. Batting 256. Terry has allowed just one base hit after retiring 15 men in a row. Vic Powell led off with a single, but then he was promptly doubled up. strike and ball indicators are not working and they just made an announcement about it. But they have auxiliary ones in left field and right field. All right, for Monty the batter. Yankees lead 6-0 in the last of the seventh.
Ferry's curve, low and away, ball one. Fastball line to left field. That's going to be in there for extra bases. And it's a double, a ground rule double, a one hopper into the seat. The second hit off Terry. A double for Astromonte. Took one bounce into the left field seat. Here's Jimmy Pearsall. Bounce to short, fly to center. is a curve low and away ball one first ball batting 336 first ball popped in the air to short right field Richardson back waving his arms and Bobby takes it after Monty holds his second Francona bounce the second fly to center. Astromati leading off second. Let's by Terry. Fastball on the outside corner strike call. Then Terry sets. Change up, hit down the first base line. Garin flips to Terry in time to get Frank Corner. As for Monty moves to third. It's two out, and here's Willie Kirkland. Bounce to short and bounce to first. <laughs> On deck, Bubba Phillips. Terry will now take his full windup as the money is third with two outs. Here's the windup. Fastball is low. Ball one. Nothing pitch. Curve outside. Ball two. Two nothing. <laughs> now the two nothing delivery. Fast ball popped in the air to left field. Hector Lopez is coming in under it. And Hector takes it for the out. For the Indians in the bottom of the seventh, no runs, one hit, no Yankee errors, one man left. And at the end of seven full innings, the Yankees six, the Indians nothing. Start using Atlantic Imperial in your car. It's the quality gasoline that cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean. As we take another look at the scoreboard, Baltimore eight. Kansas City three at the end of six and a half. Bob Johnson home in the fourth with two on for the Senators. Detroit three and Boston one at the end of two. That's Conley against Larry. Minnesota at L.A. hasn't started. Neither has Chicago at Kansas City. In the National League, Philly two, Milwaukee nothing at the end of two and a half. Baltimore home in the second with one on. Cardinals one, Cincinnati nothing at the end of two and a half. And Pittsburgh nothing and the Cubs nothing at the end of three. Los Angeles at San Francisco has not started. 
in the top of the eighth, it'll be the top of the Yankee batting order. Bobby Richardson, Billy Gardner, and Roger Maris. Richardson is two for four. Single twice, scored twice, fly to center, brought it back to the box and was thrown out. Here's the pitch to Richardson. It's lying to right field. Willie Kirkland moving back under it and takes it for the out. A hard hit ball by Richardson, but right at the right fielder. Brings up Billy Gardner. Billy's one for four, single in the third inning and scored. Fly to right twice and struck out. Pitch to Gardner. Foul back in the upper deck. More screaming goes on with a foul ball. Fastball low, one on one. delivery. Low ball two, two and one. Segment rubbing up the ball. Pitch is a ground ball to short. Woody Hill fires it to hit far in time for the out. Two away. Here's Roger Maris. Maris walked in the first inning, hit his 49th home of the year in the third, walked in the fourth, and bounced to second base in the sixth. Pitch to Rogers. Swing and a miss strike one of the curveball. Mickey Mantle on deck. Hit his 46 home of the year in the first inning with two on. Two ball inside. One on one. Two. One ball, two strikes. Serve is high this time, two and two. Two pitches foul back off the screen. What a play he should have made. He stuck his hand through the screen and caught it on the way down. And now he's trying to pull it through. <laughs> that was a really great play. I said it. He stuck his hand through the screen, caught it as it was rolling down, and then pulled it on through. <laughs> Even Mantle looked over, got a big kick out of it. <laughs> two and two on Maris. Two out and nobody on. It's strike three call. The inside corner. His fifth strikeout. The Yankees go down in order in the top of the eighth. And at the end of seven and a half, it's New York six, Cleveland nothing. For pleasure driving that is a pleasure, you need something more than a freshly washed car and a bright sunny day. For one thing, you need to be sure that your carburetor is clean to do its job at peak efficiency. 
And that's why more and more motorists from New England to Florida have started to use Atlantic Imperial gasoline regularly. This quality gas... Bottom of the eighth inning, Bubba Phillips will lead off for the Indians. Bubba line to left, pops the third. <laughs> now Terry going along at a great clip. Phillips batting 275. On deck, Johnny Romano. Pitch to Phillips is high ball one. Curve is hit high in the air to center field. Mickey Mantle moving back under it. And Nick takes it for the out. That's one away. Here's Johnny Romano who bounced to second and lined to the shortstop. Fire Sam Carrigan looking at the baseball, but it's all right. <laughs> on deck is Vic Power. There's one out, nobody on here in the last of the eighth. New York leading 6 nothing. Fastball to Romano is over strike call. Terry's legs, but Richardson coming in fast up with a throw to first. He beat it out. A nice play by Starin as Richardson threw the ball low, and that'll be a base hit for Romano. Actually, Terry got either part of his glove or his foot on that ball, and it carried over to Richardson, or would have gone right over second out to center field. And then Richardson hurrying to get the ball away, he threw it low. Starin scooped it out of the dirt, but Romano beat it out. The third hit off Terry. Brings up Vic Powell, who broke up Terry's perfect game in the sixth inning after Ralph has retired 15 straight men. Single to left. He also bounced the third. Pitch to Powell. Outside and low ball one. Woody held on deck. Follows the next pitch back, one on one. Rick batting 254. Not where Power usually bats. The fastball is hit on the ground. Boy, a backhand. It throws to Richardson for one. Back to first. Double play and a beauty. A beautiful double play started by Keith Boyer. He backhanded the ball, threw it to Richardson for one, and Bobby Strodeskow and doubled up Vic Fowler. Second double play for the Yankees in the ball game for the Indians in the bottom of the eighth. No runs, one hit. No Yankee errors, and nobody left. And at the end of eight full innings, it's New York six and Cleveland nothing. And we pause for station identification.
Good sound broadcasting for 1961. This is Quality Modern, WOKO in Albany, New York. The time, 29 minutes past 3 p.m. League is fierce against Archer in the first of two against Chicago at Kansas City. Baltimore 8, Washington 3 at the end of 7, a strut against Flipstein, Johnson home with two on. Detroit 4, Boston 1 at the end of 3, Conley against Larry, Minnesota at LA hasn't started. The National League, Philly 2, Milwaukee nothing at the end of 3 and a half, short against Fon, Mark home in the second with one on. Cardinals 1, Cincinnati nothing at the end of 3, Sadecki against O'Toole. L.A. at San Francisco hasn't started. Pittsburgh, nothing. Cubs, nothing at the end of four. Friend against Cardwell. Mickey Mantle, who's had a three for four day. A homer is 46 of the year. Two singles for four RBIs. Also fly to center. Sigmund's pitch to Mantle. Low ball one. So Mickey's driven in four and Maris two of the Yankees' six runs. One nothing pitch, low and away ball two, two and nothing. Here's a two nothing delivery. High ball three, three and nothing. Nick looks down at Frank Cassetti. He might have the green light. Nothing pitch. He took it. He was ready to swing. It's ball four. He checked it just in time. The pitch was low and away. Second walk given up by Sigmund. Mantle's first walk. And it brings up Hector Lopez, who fly to right field in the sixth. Hector playing in place of Yogi Berra. Yogi played the first four innings, was one for two. He was hit by a pitch ball on the right foot, and it's bothering him a little, so Ralph Howe took him out. Mr. Lopez popped in the air to short left field. Woody Held is going back. Francona in, and Francona calls for it. Makes the catch. He yelled, held off it at the last second. One away. Here's Elston Howard. Ellie is one for four. Struck out twice, hit back to the box and singles. Batting 353. on deck. One away. Pitch to Howard. Curve outside. Ball one. The stretch. Pitch inside. Ball two. Two and up. Pitch is swing and a miss, strike one, two and one. There's a foul back in the upper deck. Two and two. Two strikes, one out. Mantle at first. Nicky's been on four out of the five times he's been on the plate. Has a ground ball held to his left. He knocks it down but can't get it. And Mantle holds his second base. He got his glove at the ball as he dove after it. Slowed it down enough so that Mantle couldn't go to third. And Howard gets his second base hit. And the sixth off Sigman. Twelve hits for the Yankees. And here's the moose. Double twice, struck out, bounced to short. 
batting 273. at first and second. It's the Scowan. He swung and missed strike one. He tried to hold up but couldn't do it. This was down below the knees. Cleet Boyer on deck. Blue ball outside. One on one. Scroogey again is pulled way foul. The Scarum was way out in front of him. And they're diving for that foul ball. It went behind the top of him. One ball, two strikes. Now the pitch. A fly ball to short left field. It's foul, but Bubba Phillips is under it and makes the catch. Nice play by Bubba. With his back to the plate. Getting Scarum's foul flyers two way. Here's Cleet Boyle, bounced to short, walked, popped to first, and hit back to the box. Batting 229. Madlet's second, Howard is first. Boyer takes the screwball over, strike one call. <laughs> Curve outside, one on one. And in the second game, it'll be Sheldon for the Yankees and Bell for the Indians. Fastball foul back over our heads. One ball, two strikes on Boyer. Set. Pitch inside. Two and two. He fired that one. All right, ready for the two two pitch. Ball back in the upper deck again, out of play. Time is here today. Got that ball. Still two and two with two out and two on. Yankees leading six nothing. Top of the ninth. Stigman's pitch, screwball low, and it's a full count on Boyle. So, Madeline Howard will be off with the pitch. <laughs> Ready now for the payoff pitch. Both runners go. It's a ground ball to third. Phillips up with it. It's throw to Vic Power in time. So for the Yankees, in the top of the ninth, no runs, one hit. No Indian errors, two men left. And at the end of eight and a half innings, New York six, Cleveland nothing.
Atlantic Imperial Gasoline cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean. But don't take my word for it, because now you can prove it for yourself without risking an extra penny. Simply make Atlantic's clean carburetor test. Each time you buy Atlantic Imperial, ask your dealer for a receipt. Then, after 100 gallons, if you're not satisfied that Atlantic Imperial gives you generally better engine performance, you mail the receipts to Atlantic. They'll gladly refund the difference in cost between 100 gallons of Atlantic Imperial and regular gasoline. Yes, you'll like the difference, or we'll pay the difference. Start using Atlantic Imperial today. the last of the ninth for the Indians. They're trailing six to nothing. Ralph Perry spinning a beautiful three-hitter. He has pitched to just one man more than the minimum amount of batters he could pitch to up to this point. There have been two double plays by the Yankees to erase two of the base hits. On deck is Bob Neiman, who will pinch hit for Dick Stigman. Woody Harrell has lined a third and bounced into a double play, batting 272. Pitches over to Harold, strike one. Perry's curve, low and away, one and one. the 1-1 one, one pitch. Curve hit to first base. Skyron is up with it. Races to the bag for the unassisted put out. One away. And here's Bob Neiman. Neiman batting for Stigman. Batting an even 400. He's been used mainly as a pinch hitter for Cleveland. Bob was in the American League, went to the National League with the Cardinals, and now back in the American League. Pitch to Neiman outside and high ball one. Strike call, a fastball knee high. One and one. Terry's 1-1 one, one pitch. Slow curve. Line to center. A base hit for Neiman. Man, he hit that one like a bullet. The fourth hit off Terry. Brings up Ken Astromani, who has one of those four. Hits a double in the seventh inning. He popped to short and bounced to short. On deck, Jimmy Fairstar. by Terry. Fastball is low. Ball one. Neiman leading away. Another fastball. This one's over. One and one. playing in back of the runner at first. 
Serves it in the ground to third. No, Boya has it. Throws to Richardson for one. No chance for the double play. It looked like Gardner was going to get that high bounding ball, but it bounced over his head. And Boya backing him up nicely. Made the throw to second, forcing Neiman sliding in. As for Monty Safe, it's two out. And here's Jimmy Fairstall. Bounce to short, fly to center, pop to second. Terry's ready for the first pitch to Pearsall. It's a fastball hit in the air to center field. That's the ball game. Mantle drifting under it. And Mickey takes it for the out. For the Indians in the bottom of the ninth, no runs, one hit. No Yankee errors, one man left. And the Yankees win the first game of the doubleheader, six to nothing behind Ralph Terry. totals for you in just a moment. All of it brought to you by the Atlantic Refining Company and your Atlantic dealer who offer you Atlantic Imperial, the gasoline that cleans your carburetor and keeps it clean. four hits, all coming in the last four innings of the ball game. Terry didn't walk a man and struck out two. Jim Perry was the losing pitcher, giving up home runs to Roger Mantle, his Roger Maris, his 49th, and Mickey Mantle, who hit his 46th. Six to nothing, the final score. So I guess we'll have to pass up the official totals and consider that the story of the ball game. With the Yankees winning the opening game six to nothing. Well, we'll be back in approximately twenty to twenty-five minutes with the second game of the doubleheader. But this wraps it up for P. Valentine and Sons, brewers of the crisp refresher Valentine Beer. Enjoy sunny, mellow Valentine Beer along with baseball. And the Atlantic Refining Company and your Atlantic dealer to offer you Atlantic Imperial, the gasoline that cleans your carburetor and keeps it clean. Now, be sure to stay tuned for the second game, which will be coming up very shortly. For now, this is the home of Champions Network.